Talk about just the the twelfth man and one hundred six thousand second largest crowd in the history. Let me of tell you stadium. something. That atmosphere and environment tonight. You don't want to play in that. Something wrong with you. That that right there. That that recruits and the people and the love. I mean that that that's as good environment and atmosphere as there is in college football, bar none. I don't care where it's at. Those people are behind you, and I'm thankful we won the game for them, and I mean that for our players, for everybody who believes in us, and our, especially our fans, though, because, listen, this, this place deserves a great football team. We're doing everything in our power to make it that way, and we're going to try to get it there. We've got a lot of work to do, and we're growing. But this, this fan base is tremendous, and the atmosphere and environment is the best in college football. Talk about what you can improve on from the time that you all met up last year at all. You know, this wasn't about <clears throat> this week getting ready to play this defense. You know, this was 12 months. So, you know, when you get embarrassed like we did a year ago, um, at least me, you know, offensively, we're going to try everything we can to figure out how to how to beat you. So welcome in to the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter, and I'm joined as always by my cousin Shane, who goes by Big Orange Balls on Twitter. What are you up to, you big Tennessee homer? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, man, quite a bit. We're both a, a little bit out of it, a little bit under yeah. the weather, but not not as bad as the SEC. <laughs> oh, and four in these bowl games. How are oh, you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing terrible, man. I, I just uh, – here we talked about the C word the other day, and guess what happens, Mike? I get it again, you know, <laughs> day after Christmas to find out I got the COVIDs. Uh, so they put me in quarantine here for 10, five days. I don't even know. They're changing the rules on us so much, but uh, yeah, I did that. And then, you know, in my drunken stupor, I decided to bet on every SEC team, <laughs> 50 bucks a piece. And just let you know right now, I am down two hundo. And uh, <laughs> feeling pretty bad. So, uh, yeah, other than that, Mike, at least we got football. But uh, we're going to talk about some of these games. And I've got some questions i got to ask you. And I'm sure there's some things you want to talk about around the league. But, man, it has not been a good start for the SEC. No, it definitely has. But at least, hey, Shane, you're beating Nick Saban in uh, one category. And that's the <laughs> uh, the COVID positive <laughs> category here. Yeah. But- me and Bill O'Brien, we were down there at the Applebee's, and it got me, man, you know. <laughs> hey, so, Shane, we wanted to recap these horrible, horrible football games. Mm-hmm. If you had uh, the misfortune of watching them here on Tuesday, Auburn lost to Houston. Mm. Mississippi State just got smoked by Texas Tech. We'll mm. get to that in just a second. But I wanted to start the show, Shane, with, uh, you know, so, some tragic news here, really sad John Madden, legendary broadcaster, NFL coach, and, of course, the face of uh, the best-selling football game of all time, passed away here on Tuesday at the age of 85. And, you know, this is a guy that I never heard a bad word about. Mm -mm. They just released uh, the documentary on him. I think it's from NFL, Fox Sports, something like that. I, I haven't had a chance to watch it just yet, but, you know, we are in the age group, Shane, where... We grew up idolizing this guy. Yeah. And, you know, I'll tell you a quick story here, Shane. This is, um, you know, how I really got introduced to football was around this time, years and years ago, under the Christmas tree, got a little gift from my dad. And it was John Madden. I think it was like 92 <laughs> or something. I'm that old. Yeah. It was John Madden 92. And I remember my mom got mad at him. Because I didn't know much, anything about football. I didn't know how to play football. It was really my dad buying a video game for himself mm-hmm. uh, that I didn't know how to play. So he would whoop me on it. But it wasn't long before I had mastered that damn John Madden football game. And that began my love affair of football. And, you know, it's not just me. It's countless others, multiple generations. And, and that's kind of the beauty of John Madden. I know, you know, he didn't even have anything to do with the game the last couple of years. But still you know, getting people into the game of football. And that has just, you know, played a large part, I think, for people our age and younger and and probably people even older, getting them to embrace the game of football. And I think, uh, you know, beyond him winning the Super Bowl, beyond all the games he called, he was the number one announcer for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You know, his impact on football is just, it's immeasurable. You know what? That's it, Mike. Uh, you know, I sent out a little thing. He was—he wasn't just a coach or a commentator; he's a teacher. And 
And uh, I said it in a joking video, but it was true, man. It was growing up. You know, I think I think the reason that football is so engaging right now, you could argue – uh, because of video games. And and the face of that video game is not other than Jen John Madden, you know. So he did a lot. Yeah, he played in the Super Bowl. You know, he's he was inducted into the, the Hall of Fame. He's did a lot of successful thing in the actual sport. But what he did outside the sport, I think, is one of those immeasurable things that he was able to accomplish, man. I, I just, like you said, he just brought in more and more generations of, of, of people into football because of just his passion for the sport. So, uh, it's true. I mean, all the bad news that's out there right now, you know, this is, this is one of the worst ones because John Madden was my childhood. Uh, one of, it, it, it's so many things like the quotes that you take from him. One of the, my favorite ones I saw posted, uh, John Madden's three rules to his players were be on time, pay attention and play like all hell. When I tell you to, you know, <laughs> it's like, Little things like that you just remember, and then him, you know, just narrating up there in the box, you just can't duplicate it. Uh, it's changed sports talk football. So rest in peace, man. There's a turkey, and if you notice, you know, like the girl says, here's a leg here and a leg here and a leg here. There's four legs. And I think this one may have, you know, a couple down there too, but uh, we have these turkey legs that we're going to give out after the game. Little piece of pie gone right, already. Right there, well, you never know. You, I don't you know who's in that bus when I'm up here. I don't know who's down there. But I know that that six-legged turkey's there, yep. and we're going to have those six legs to give out to the MVPs of this game. But we got a turducken, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a turducken right here where we got, you know what a turducken is? A turducken, this thing here, is a deboned duck stuffed in a deboned chicken stuffed in a debone turkey cut sideways and you get and you get a little turkey and a little chicken and a little duck now that's there that that's turducken then over there we have the turkey see now here's the turkey we got one leg two legs three legs four legs five legs six legs but anyway anyway here's how you slice it see a lot of people don't know you have to slice it down the middle see and then you slice it across this way because what it is it's a it's a deboned Chicken stuffed in a deboned duck, stuffed in a deboned turkey. And it's, well, it's, it's really five different things. It's a, it's a chicken, a duck, a turkey, and two kinds of dressing. And are you going to have one on, on your Thanksgiving table? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have one. I have to bring it though, but you know, you know, because it. Oh, here's Here a, it is. Here's, here's, a, here's a picture of one. Duck in yeah, the picture. Yeah, picture. That's the, that is one. it. And you see, you cut it like right down here. <laughs> see, and then this is what it looks like inside. <laughs> See, so you got turkey, and then duck, and then dressing, and then chicken. Oh, oh. And then, then you just have to do it that way, or now, if any of that makes sense. It, it, now, can I get some hoisin sauce with that? <laughs> That's unbelievable. This stuff is looking good and smelling good and tasting good. We got to dig in and start eating now. It is good, but you've got to hurry because the bus is running. It's getting close to game time. We got to get headed for the Silver Dome, and we just like to say Happy Thanksgiving to you guys back in the city. You're my, I see a lot of me and John Mad. You know, just when I start <laughs> rambling about random stuff, you're just like, "Hey, hey!" You're like, you're like my Pat. You know, just brings me back in. <laughs> Exactly. Without John Madden, there was no Cousin Shane. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right, man. Oh, man. So many good games. And I, I'm, I play it now. I still play online. I still play Madden. I just – and I will for the rest of my life. I'll be one of those 80-year-olds, hopefully, knock on wood. If COVID-45 mm -hmm. doesn't kill me, you know, I think that <laughs> I'll be playing Madden, you know, with my boys. So, it, it's just it, – it's changed. And, and I and I mean, it's just every – man, it's just sad. Sad news. Yeah, true story. Shane, even this morning, when are you joining the Madden franchise, Mike? I mean, that's <laughs> legitimate. He's got the text sent to me. So, yeah, it's funny how things come all around. But, uh, hey, Shane, we got to move on to these <laughs> SEC bowl games. Right before we got on the show, this was uh, when Mississippi State just got spanked. We, we hopped on mm. literally moments after. Shane says he's getting fired up here. So, I'm, mm. I'm dying to hear what he's got to say. But uh, so why don't you just get into it? Because, hell, I mean, I could throw stats at you, but let me just tell you, Miss, uh, Mississippi State got spanked and, and Texas yeah. Tech, uh, uh, inferior team, just ran all over them 34 to 7. I mean, it was disgraceful 
What's on your mind there, Shane? Every damn year, Mike, we talk about this in the bowl games and we make excuses for these SEC teams that, you know, we got our opt outs. Now you got COVID playing. We've got all this stuff. And it just felt like Mississippi State did not get off that bus and ready to play football today. It was mm. absolutely embarrassing. It was mistake after mistake after drop pass after. I mean, they had opportunities to make this a ball game. They had opportunities. But I mean, even that little punt return i mean come on special teams what are we doing here there's there's just so many things that went wrong there and it, they just weren't ready to play and and i think i think to myself when i watch games like this mike if this is week three we got a different game here you know what i'm saying mississippi state is right. is beating the shit out of texas tech it's gonna have you can go ahead and retire the oil pump. It ain't coming out week three. But in this bowl game, we had to watch it on the sideline because we got a team that just limped into this. All we kept hearing at the beginning is 10 people didn't make it to this game, mostly on defense. And guess who who got beat up today? The defense. You know what I'm saying? So right. that part of me is, is frustrating, and I'm like, how can we fix this, Mike? Well, I'm looking at this Liberty Bowl. Do you know how much money's online at this game? No idea. Five million, or four point seven million dollars, is being paid for these teams to play at this game. Guess what, Mike? Give it to the damn players. You're dressing out seventy people, ballpark on each side. I done did the math. I don't have this thing. I'm not Rain Man here. I already got it wrote out. Thirty five thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars. I guarantee, if you say, "Hey, you kids win. Whoever wins this game gets forty thousand. Whoever loses this game gets thirty thousand guarantee we're going to have a more competitive ball game. Even these guys that are thinking about going to the NFL draft, this is the day we're starting to pay our players. Do it in the bowl games. You want to make this thing competitive? The, the Liberty Bowl is going to make more money if they know they got a competitive game. There's a theme in the SEC right now, and it has been for the last five years, that it doesn't really matter. Well, that's why people aren't there. That's why people aren't watching this game. You pay them, you, they will play, brother. I guarantee you put a little money on the line, these guys will show up and we'll have a competitive matchup. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. I never even thought of that. But, hey, it's out there. It's legal now. I mean, this is just kind of the mm -hmm. way college football is. And we're trying to make bowl games special again. I mean, what what better incentive than getting paid here? And Exactly. I think, you know, to your point, I mean, we're seeing – you know, like the Pitt quarterback who was a who was a Heisman finalist, Peyton Manning's best friend, apparently. <laughs> you, you know, he, he's not playing in his game. Imagine the rest of his teammates saying, "What the hell? We got exactly. 50, fifty grand on the line. You get you better get your ass in the lineup." You know what I mean? Yeah. There would be maybe peer pressure is the wrong word, but you know, you, you wouldn't want to not be there for your teammates. Who you know, mm -hmm. there's probably tons of guys on your team that uh, that's life-changing money, at, at least Absolutely. at that age, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, I love that idea, Shane. And yeah, cause, cause we just got to do something, man, because you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys out here apologizing for the SEC saying, well, you know, they just didn't care. And the other team <laughs> cared, you know, I, I think that's bullshit. Yeah. Most, most of the time there's exceptions to that, but you know, I think SEC just not showing up and this yeah. is a, uh, Two games in a row, Shane, where the offense has struggled for Mississippi State going back to the Egg Bowl. They mm -hmm. were not very good in that performance. I know it, was, it seems like an eternity ago, but that was the last game they played. And, and of course, the defense that uh, was missing so many guys getting uh, just run on left and right by Texas Tech. My God, I didn't even know Texas Tech knew how to run the football. <laughs> Yet they look like uh, Alabama against uh -huh. this Mississippi State defense. It was pathetic. And, you know, I think uh, the thing with Mississippi State this year, Shane, that uh, you know, so much attention to Will Rogers, and and for good reason. I mean, he's a hell of a player. He put up insane yeah. numbers this year. But the thing that was different this year, aside from Will Rogers making those improvements, was the offensive line, Shane, was abysmal last season. Mm. This mm -hmm. season, strength of the team, and they were out with gone two tackles. And I think that played a huge, huge difference, particularly in the run game here for Mississippi State. Too much to overcome. And, and once they got down a little bit, once that adversity struck, I don't know. It, it just didn't seem like they had any answers. They Mississippi State had more three and outs than they had scoring drives in this game. Yeah. And when have you ever seen that from a Mike Leach offense? I mean, I don't know. This was just a god-awful game. I was just hoping we'd get a competitive game after right. three 
terrible SEC games to start the bowl season. Now we've got a fourth one. And I'm just sitting here shaking my head. And I jokingly said, I don't think SEC is going to win a bowl game. Now everybody's jumping on me. Jeez. What the I- hell? Tennessee's going to win. <laughs> Arkansas is going to win. I'm not out of here predicting. I'm just saying, hell, I uh, thought Mississippi uh, State was going to win too. You know what? Yeah, man. I mean, two score favorites. So you would think that they would have. I mean, hell, Vegas was giving an edge, but I it, it, it just frustrating all the way around on this one. Like I said, it was just it was missed opportunities, Mike. You know, when we finally got some momentum on defense, it was a three and out on offense. When we finally mm-hmm. were moving the chain, then all of a sudden it was the drops. The the you know, and it just felt like. And, and Texas Tech, boy, they did some things right, but boy, they got lucky too. But that, I mean, it all boiled down to just momentum in this game, and and Mississippi State just never could hold on to it. Every time they'd get a little bit of it, they'd find a way to give it back. So, like I said, this is a week three game. I guarantee Mississippi State would have won, but it is what it is, man. It's a loss in a bowl game, and you know, I thought the narrative would be sweet. The Pirate getting you know beaten up on the Raiders. It, it just it, it wrote its own headline, but. We just weren't able to do it. I felt like Rodgers played his heart out, man. I think he played great out there. But it, it just wasn't a full team effort, man. Uh, it, it, and, and I think some of the, the younger class showing up, you know, maybe that was part of the reason we had stupid penalties and, and, and whatnot. So, I don't know. I just hate it because it's not a good start. Here we talk about how great the SEC is, and we're, we're over right now. I mean, we still got nine other opportunities, thank God, because everybody made a ball game besides Vanderbilt. But Which, by the way, was my favorite tweet. It looks like Vandy's going to be the only one that doesn't lose a ball game from that SEC mic there. But uh, it, so far, rough start. But I'm not, I'm not bailing, man. I, I, I'm not bailing. I'm still all in. I still think uh, there's a lot of te- a lot of SEC teams that that are going to that are going to show up. Uh, it's just unfortunate the the first four didn't. Yeah, without a doubt. And and speaking of the other, so the other game we didn't hit on, Shane. I mean, man, I wanted this one bad for Auburn, but they fall seventeen to thirteen in the Birmingham Bowl. It was a sellout crowd. Vast majority of them was Auburn Tigers and. Houston mm-hmm. was ranked number twenty. This, you know, this is always my favorite when a six and six SEC team beats a, a eleven win conference USA, whatever the hell league they're in, and and they're <laughs> ranked and they're you know the best Houston team of all time. They can barely play with a six and six Auburn, and that's essentially what happened in this one until uh, Houston scored with about uh, two and a half minutes. I think it was three minutes left in the game, and that was mm-hmm. all she wrote. Man, I mean, this was. As ugly as Mississippi State, Texas Tech was, this one kind of was that ugly, but uh, no one got going in this one, uh, aside from Tank (laughs) Finley. I mean, the offense was basically, let's give it to Tank, get out of his way, see what he can make, because uh, old TJ Finley, man, plays were there to be made left and right, misfire after misfire. He looked like Joe Milton out there, overthrowing everybody and his mother, and you know, I, I hate to put it all in one player because it's it's never as simple as that. But, you know, had he been able to connect on a couple of these passes, I mean, Houston would have got spanked in this game. So, man, rough, rough year for Auburn, Shane. I mean, just look at the – at the, as, as strange as it is, we're sitting here with a losing record to end the season, six and seven for the Auburn Tigers. Entering the, the second week of November, Shane, they controlled their destiny in the SEC West. God, I mean, I, I just can't – I don't know if I've ever experienced something like that in the first year of, a, of an SEC head coach. And, and I, you know, I'm not selling out on, on Brian Harson or anything like this, but if I'm an Auburn Tiger fan, I'm, I'm sitting here saying – and in credit, uh, I, I wish I, I was looking at the tweet. Someone tweeted this at me, but the buyout, Shane, do you remember all the money they had to pay to get Gus Malzahn and his staff to go and to hire mm-hmm. Brian Harson and this, and this new staff? Any idea how much that combined figure was? No. $70 million. <laughs> and here we got a six and seven football team here. Oh. One, so. Hey, come on. I know. I know. I know. They they had a lot of ups and downs, but they had some great games, Mike. Yeah. I, 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 we can't, I, I can't pile on them here. I will tell you this. When uh, when Austin Davis takes this job, I hope I hope the one disclaimer he had was, "Hey, we better hit the transfer portal for a quarterback because TJ mm-hmm. is not our guy." I, I mean, if that's not more obvious in a bowl game situation here, especially like you said, when Tank was just having his way with everybody, you know, he, he was a force to be reckoned with. 
the box was loaded and you cannot get anybody downfield. I mean, some of these passes that were made, they were just god awful. For every good pass he had, he had three bad ones. So uh, I don't like to pile on the kid, but I did. <laughs> I mean, I did. Uh, the the fact of the matter is Auburn hasn't had a good quarterback since Cam Newton. And that's the thing, man. I mean, these guys just – I mean, there's a reason Gus isn't there. There's not been any development since since Cam. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 right. they get all these big names that come in. This is going to be I – mean, Bo Nix was the, the latest. You know, he was going to come in and set the world on fire. And we're just not seeing any progression. And we're not seeing it through any the, – the, the different coaches. We're not seeing it through the different – coordinators you know that's what Auburn needs Auburn is one good quarterback away from being a 10 win 10 win team easily I think this year if they had good quarterback play uh there because you saw it when Bo was was on Auburn would win when he was off they would fail so they just they need some consistency back there but they also need a quarterback whisper and I'm not saying that's what they're getting from uh from our boy from Seattle but you know, you mm-hmm. look when he first got there to the Seahawks, what he was able to do with Russell Wilson. And they, I mean, of course, they all got glowing things to say about the coach as he's leaving. But <laughs> his first year up there, I mean, the, the man was playing. I, I'm a huge fantasy football lover, man. I wish right. I had Russell Wilson that year. So if, if, if he can do something like that or something similar down here in Auburn, then I think they'll be all right. But the, the, the message has got to be out there, Mike, that the job is open. The, the the starting quarterback is not on that roster currently. I'm watching some of these these kids at Texas Tech. I'm watching uh, the kid right across the, the the on the other side there, Houston. I would have rather had him suited up. You had him suited up. You're, you you would have won this game. Yeah, without a doubt. And you know that's the position Auburn finds itself, Shane. And and you know, like you said, we're not trying to pile on Harson. It's not necessarily all his fault because. I don't want to call it the mess because there's plenty of talent there. You know, Auburn had a stingy defense. I know they were down a number of guys, but hell, this defense, uh, yeah. you know, I thought they, for the most part, they balled out here against Houston. I know they, they allowed the touchdown there late in the game, but there was questionable calls that uh, opened mm-hmm. the door for, for Houston to score there at the end. But aside from Tank Bigsby, though, it's it's almost like a total rebuild on the offensive side. It's not just the quarterback. It's the offensive line. There's, we're lacking receivers. I mean, we may have mm-hmm. the best running back, the most talented running back in the SEC, but what else we got around him? And, and yeah. you know, Brian Harson's supposed to be this offensive guru. He comes out here, he fires Mike Bobo after one year. He's bringing in his guy to to, to recruit and coach quarterbacks. Now it's it's on him, man. And yeah. I don't know if you if you caught this comment. We'll play it here in just a second, Shane. But Brian Harson said in this year. My, my only year with Auburn, I learned more about football than I ever have coaching <laughs> in my entire career, my, my entire playing career. And I don't know, you know, I, I, if he's being transparent, I appreciate the fact he's being transparent, but I don't know if I want to, you know, I, if I'm a fan of Auburn, I'm sitting here saying, my God, this guy's, he just made that comment. I don't know. What, what do you think about Harson coming out here and saying, I, I learned more about football than I ever knew uh, this one season here? Well, it's the SEC, Mike. I mean, it, this is the most competitive conference. That's why, that's why it drives me nuts. We lose these bowl games because there's no reason we should. We're we're just every game that I've watched. There's been more talent on our side than their side, and we just not brought it to the stage, which yeah. which frustrates you. And I think this is a lesson, man. This is a lesson for Arson too, because you see teams like where he came from compete in these bowl games. You mm-hmm. watch teams like Texas Tech. They came in ready to play. You watch teams like Army. They came in ready to play. SEC teams, they don't. They don't, and that's why we are, we're we we're fumbling out of the gate here. So, I, mm-hmm. I think this is what maybe – I'm taking it as maybe this is another life lesson. This is something that he can better prepare his program moving forward because this isn't the last bowl game that Harson's going to be taking them to. So, I don't know. I'm not reading into it too much. I did I did like some of the comments you made about the defense. I, I thought, man, those boys, they were playing very aggressive. It was fun to see a fiery SEC squad out there. Um, and and, and how, how the hell Smoke didn't land uh, an NIL deal with Target, I have no idea, Mike, because <laughs> that guy has got to be leading the league in, in most reviews for targeting. Am I right? I mean, he's got to be up there. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny that uh, that you said that because your brother, I was watching the game with him, 
he said he made the similar comment, but uh, he was wondering how Marlboro cigarettes had not gotten smoked Monday is an ideal. So <laughs> it gives you an idea oh. where that family, where their mind's at. They're all thinking about the money, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get them paid, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm most disappointed just for our seniors, for our team. And, <clears throat> you know, what I see, there's a lot of fixable things. There's a lot of things out there that um, I know we can be much better at. And so – uh, that's that's the reality of it. Um, you know, is it is it something that's that we can come back and address and it's very fixable? Absolutely. Is it something that we have to be aware of at all times? Yes. And finishing games is a big part of that, which it's not so much about finishing games as it is just consistent execution. So you got to sustain the effort and focus necessary to, to be successful in the game. Um, and the fourth quarter happens to be the one that gets magnified because it's the, the last quarter of the game. But it's, it's a continuation of the execution that you should have throughout the entire four quarters, in my opinion. And we're just um, we're not as consistent as we need to be. And those are fixable things. And we'll fix them. Uh, yeah, Brian, um, <clears throat> TJ had a, some really great throws and then missed some guys downfield, too. What were some of the encouraging things that you saw from him and what do you sort of want to work on most with him this off season going forward? Well, yeah, the encouraging things are the throws he made, you know, the ones that he didn't. Um, you know, we just got to give our guys a chance. And sometimes, you know, the win's a little bit of a factor at times. And, you know, there's obviously there, there's pressure. It's not like you drop back and set your feet every throw. You're sliding, you're moving. There's all these little factors that just you have to adjust. So there's always little tiny tweaks at that position that you're just maneuvering through um, in, a, in a particular play. And at the same time, we still got to give those guys opportunities. And, and I know he knows that. I thought the decision making wasn't bad. You know, he was going to the right guy. So we were, we were making the right decisions. We were throwing to the right guys. Now we got to execute a little bit better on the throws. And um, Coach, I asked you this yesterday. You said you had a game to be played before you could really assess. But overall, this <clears throat> season, just kind of – I know you just got off the field and you have some time to think, but what's the message to Auburn fans as well going into next year and the future of Auburn football? Well, again, I'm, I'm still not going to assess the season yet until you actually have a chance to go back and, and truly dive into what did you learn. That's really what you do. You dive into what did you learn from the year, and then you go back and evaluate every single thing. Um, as far as our football program goes, I think there's a lot of things that we learned this year that we know we have to be better at. Uh, in order to be the type of, of caliber program that I think we can be, um, we, we, need to have, we need to have the mentality that um, every single day, you know, what we do matters. And it really does. I mean, that's just, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I think teams that, that have success uh, and organizations that have success, then everything you do matters. So... Uh, the way that we prepare, the way that we work, the way that we do things. Um, and I thought we did a really good job of that when I first got here. You know, we, we had some really good things. There was a lot of focus and attention. And as things get easier or you start to win and you have success, you know, you have to make sure that you stick back to, you go back to what you, you were doing that worked. Um, and so, you know, I, I think depth is a factor in our football team. You know, we're obviously having a chance to bring some guys in. And recruiting is a big factor, all right? That never ends. And so, you know, we'll continue with that. But we're not going to stop. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, I told those guys, I mean, I learned more this season than I've learned any year I've played and coached. And so that's motivating going into the off season. that, hey, these, these are the things that we can fix. And they're very fixable. And that's the best part. I mean, if I didn't think that they were fixable, you know, you'd be miserable. Like, this is just how it is. Well, it's not like that. Um, they're very fixable. There are some things as far as an attitude and, and a mentality that we do need to fix, not just within our team. I mean, just our program. And, and we're here to do that. That's the challenge. So all the things that we know we have to do, we're going to focus on that. All the things that um, I think from the outside perception that everyone thinks we have to do, we're going to focus on those things too. But... You know, nobody's going nobody's gonna to go in there and just hang their head and just say, well, this is just how it is. No, we're going to change it, we're going to fix it, and we're going to get better. At the end of the day, I mean, there is no plan B, right? There's plan A, and we're here to make this work. And we got a staff and a group of players that are all willing to do whatever it takes to make it work. 
So at the end of the day, that's it. And so, you know, we'll be driven, we'll be motivated, you know, whatever extra pressure uh, that's not really going to need be needed to be applied because we already feel that. We want to win and we want to be successful. And Auburn football should, in my opinion. So there's things to clean up. There's a lot to do. And, you know, we're here to do it. So I do not enjoy covering this when these SEC teams lose, Shane. So no, I, I, I'm about done ready to talk about this this one. I'm ready to move on to uh, on the next episode. We'd be breaking down South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Purdue, and of course the big ones, the uh, college football semifinals: Alabama, Cincinnati, Michigan, Georgia. That'll be mm-hmm. on the next episode. You got anything before we hop off? Because I'm, I'm about to start crying here. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, man. That I, the CDC thing is a big deal, Mike. Uh, I, I think, oh yeah, sp- especially the NFL. The NFL now they they immediately switched theirs to five days. Uh, expect college to to follow suit. So, you know, you're worried about some of these kids opting out. I mean, I, nothing's worse. I feel bad. You think you feel bad right now as an SEC? Think about being a uh, a fan of UCLA or uh, yeah. that other, you know, I mean, just you, you made State. all these plans. Yeah, you made all these plans. You get out there. I mean, think about this. You And you cancel a game five hours for kickoff. I mean, that's that's terrible. So, um, I, I just, I, I mean, it could be worse. So, I, I think that's like silver lining that that's playing mm-hmm. because maybe we're going to get some uh, no more opt-outs, that sort of thing. And you're going to yeah. notice compet- more. I think more competitive games moving forward. So uh, I'm, I'm not – it's a rough start. It's a rough start, buddy. But uh, some of these teams, the SEC teams, they barely got in. You know what I'm saying? We got some juggernauts coming up. And uh, I'm looking at that Cincinnati spread at 13 and a half still, and I'm surprised it ain't moved. But I, I just think Alabama's going to come out with some ass. I think Georgia's going to come out with some ass. I think my Tennessee Vols are about to put Purdue through. I, I mean, I think we're going to see some really good games here. I want to see South Carolina beat North Carolina. I want to. I want to see it all, Mike. We got to win out. I, I want to see the fight like that UCF Florida game. That fight after that's the attitude I want to see during a game. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we got we got nine more opportunities. If we walk away from this thing nine and four, we're going to be happy as an SEC fan. Oh yeah, last thing, Shane. I'm glad you brought up that point because I did want to make this uh, announcement here with the uh, with all the COVID stuff. But uh, Bill O'Brien, Doug Marone, Alabama coaches, they're already. Uh, with the team, ready for the game. JT oh, Daniels, wow. George Pickens, already down there with the team, ready for the game. So I think you're on to something, Shane. I think we're, we're doing good. I'm not hearing anything behind the scenes that any mm-hmm. other SEC games at this point in time, any danger of being canceled. So fingers crossed uh, we get all the rest of the SEC bowl games. And, uh, you know, I think I'll leave it at that one. But uh, I do appreciate mm-hmm. you, Shane, hopping on the line as always. And I appreciate each and every one of you for checking us out. We'll be back with uh, some more bowl previews on the next episode. Catch you on the next one. Yeah, COVID ain't keeping me down, baby. See you guys <laughs> on the next one. Go Vols. <laughs> Better luck next year. <laughs> I'm still surprised the Cowboys are going for it, again. for it again. I think that was a bad call the first time they did it. I think it's a bad call now. It's fourth, and it's still a foot. Emmett Smith is still deep with Daryl Johnston in front of him. Same play. Didn't get it again. Didn't get it again. That's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. What in the heck is going on? The score's tied. You're on the road. Woo! I don't know. The Eagles will take over at the Cowboy 30-yard line, about the 29 and a half. There's no place here. I mean, this is this is short yardage defense. The Eagles are selling out against the run. They have everyone up. They just read the thing. There's no chance. There's no chance to get that ball in there against that defense. The linebackers come fill the hole. The defensive backs are in the hole. The line control the line of scrimmage. But still, even that call, I mean, when you're in that area on the field, you have to punt the ball. Romanowski left the charge. This is Ricky Water. He'll run it straight ahead and let the clock run. 
Well, Dallas does have all three timeouts. They're going to have to start using them and use them on this series. Yeah, I thought I thought they got that call, that two-minute warning. I thought they dodged a bullet, and I then they go so back too. and punt, and they did the same thing. Same play, <laughs> same result. Yeah, they deserve to lose. 17-17.